Meghan, I feel free at last. Duchess tells of liberation at ditching Twitter and Instagram, so here's some of her posts before she went cold turkey. As one of the most famous and most photographed women on the planet, the Duchess of Sussex is certainly used to being the center of attention and having the world's eyes locked on her every move. But while Meghan seems to have taken the intense demands of royal life in her stride, the former actress revealed that it was a different kind of pressure that she suffered from keenly before her romance with Harry blossomed. The 37-year-old disclosed that she now feels free after closing down her social media accounts and lifestyle blog as she spoke out on the dangers of seeking validation online. She conversed openly about the hidden perils of Facebook and the like during a chat with members of the public on Bondi Beach, where she and her husband Prince Harry met with others to discuss issues surrounding mental health. The former actress was previously an avid user of social media documenting many aspects of her love life, traveling and charity work, and even had her own lifestyle and well-being blog called The Tig. However activity on the accounts of Meghan, who had 1.9 million followers on Instagram, slowly died down in 2017 amid rumors that she was dating Prince Harry. In fact shortly after news of their romance broke she shared a picture of two bananas hugging with the caption Sleep Tight 20 in what many interpreted it as a symbol of the couple's long-distance relationship. The Duchess finally closed the blog and her Facebook, Twitter and Instagram accounts in January ahead of her wedding to Prince Harry to bring her in line with the rest of the royals, whose accounts are run by the social media teams of their household. Jessina Oaks, 26, of Bondi revealed how the Duchess was incredibly open about her experience online, as the pair chatted on the beach in Sydney during the fourth day of the Royals' tour of Australia. Jessina said, she said a really beautiful quote. She said flattery and criticism run through the same filter. She said it was very freeing that she no longer has social media. Meghan, who is expecting her first baby with Prince Harry in the spring of 2019, also told royal fans who gathered to catch a glimpse of the popular couple on Bondi Beach in Sydney on Thursday how she's relying on yoga to boost her energy levels. The Duchess, 37, admitted she'd been awake at 4.30 am that morning practicing in an effort to combat her tiredness, as she and Harry joined an anti-bad vibes circle on Australia's most iconic beach with members of a local surfing community group. The royal's mother Doria Ragland is a yoga instructor and fitness fan Megan, who was frequently snapped out and about with her yoga mat in the days before she joined the firm, has previously described the practice as being in her blood. Charlotte Connell, 35, who is 23 weeks pregnant, and is the mother of Finn, too, said, Megan told me that pregnancy was like having jet lag. She said she was up up at 4.30 am this morning doing yoga in her room as she couldn't sleep. It's a bit of a double whammy for her, she said as she has both the baby and the jet lag to content with. We both talked about how you feel jet lagged even though you have not traveled anywhere. Even in her jet lag she got up to do yoga this morning at 4.30. Physical activity like yoga and surfing is so good for healing your mind. As a TV star based in Toronto presiding over her own lifestyle website, The Tig, then actress Megan frequently updated her fans on her favorite workouts, revealing she was a fan of Pilates Platinum. The mega former method founded by her close friend, Pilates instructor Heather Dorak. Her remarks today made clear she intends to keep working out through pregnancy. Kensington Palace confirmed the Duke and Duchess happy news in a statement on Monday, just hours after they touched down in Australia at the start of their first major overseas tour. The popular couple have been greeted by cheering crowds at all of their engagements to date including a trip to Bondi Beach on Friday morning where Harry and Meghan joined a circle of colorfully dressed surfers to discuss the importance of being open about mental health battles. The couple spent around 10 minutes listening to the experiences of other members of the group and sharing their own, laughing and putting their arms around each other. They also visited MacArthur Girls High School on the fourth day of their visit to Australia and spoke to teenagers about equality, with the Duchess who has even put her feminist manifesto on the Buckingham Palace website, saying she felt emotional hearing their passionate views. Harry, who is now said to identify as a feminist, told the girls he wants men to add their voices to the fight for equality. Men can help as well by getting involved, we have to, 
he said. We need to get men's voices involved as soon as possible. His wife, who has been a long-term advocate for women's rights, told students that their projects, including making boxes of supplies for women in need, made her proud. You guys all remind me so much of myself when I was growing up, she told 14-year-old girls. I went to an all-girls school which was incredibly diverse as well. I think being around such empowered young women, it becomes something that you all just grasp onto to understand your world. It's made you confident, well-spoken. You have an attention set to really do something to change the world, and you have to keep it up. It makes me so emotional. You're doing really really good work and I'm so happy that we're here. We give you our full support. The couple's surprise appearance at the school on Friday turned out to be the worst kept secret on campus. As Gladys Berejiklian, the premier of New South Wales, teased them about being overexcited to see her, the teenagers fizzed with anticipation until the Duke and Duchess were finally introduced. Then, cheers and excited screams filled the air as they walked outside to meet the well-behaved girls who had been sitting neatly for assembly. Invited to sit on a park bench in the center, the couple watched a ballet-inspired dance performance from students to the song Power of Love before heading inside for the workshops. The couple earlier went to Bondi Beach, one of Australia's most famous landmarks, to meet a local community surfing group known as One Wave. It was founded by Grant Trebilco who suffered from mental health issues for a decade but felt unable to talk about them. He was eventually diagnosed as being bipolar and hospitalized. When he came out, he said surfing was his savior and he finally felt able to open up to his closest friends, who were incredibly sympathetic to him and also shared issues of their own. He has now created Fluoro Fridays where people dress up in fluorescent clothes and go to the beach with the aim of fostering an atmosphere where others can open up about their own mental health issues. Harry and Meghan, who was wearing a sleeveless Martin Grant dress with espadrille tie wedges, were both given brightly colored lays, garlands of flowers, to put round their necks in order to enter into the spirit of things. Accompanied by Treble Co., they kicked off their shoes on the edge of the beach and walked barefoot to sit in a group with some of the colorfully dressed surfers. Treble Co., 37 of Bondi, said the couple's openness about mental health would help people around the world. To have the Duke and Duchess down at Fluoro Friday helped make mental health visible around the world, he said. And it let people know that mental health doesn't discriminate. One thing that really stood out for me was that Prince Harry said asking for help is not a sign of weakness. It's a sign of strength. Mental health is invisible. You can't see when people are struggling. Wearing the bright fluoro helps start conversations that never usually happen around mental health. It reduces that barrier. Those bright colors show we can make it visible and we don't have to go through it alone. Dabri Eulick Whale, 37, said afterwards, Oh my goodness, they were just so real, so relatable. They shared their own experiences, which was amazing. Harry said seeking help was the best thing he had ever done. He was really open and honest. He said it doesn't matter who you open up to, they don't have to be professional. Anyone can be there for you. It could be your best mate or a stranger. You just need to open up to them. She added, they talked about the strangeness of their own situation and the lives they lead but that at the end of the day they are just real people. They are just human beings. They said they were just like us and that people say lots of positive things to you and then they say one negative thing, and that's what gets you down. Megan said how she did yoga at 4.30 this morning because of the jet lag. She says she is feeling okay. Not too bad. They said they hadn't really had time to settle down and get their heads around thing, and they have another 70-odd engagements to go. After the circle the royals walked over to a group practicing yoga. Nyo Peniatovsky, 25, said, Megan said it was her leveler, it's what keeps her grounded, like surfing does for us. She said it was her escape. Chatting with another group of surfers, Harry said he had never waxed a board before, so he and Megan both had a go. Surf instructor Sam Schumacher, 31, said the couple both revealed they had surfed, adding, The circle time was great. Two or three of us shared our personal stories. This visit will really raise the profile of what we are trying to do and the fact that mental health doesn't discriminate. It can affect anyone and that we all need to try and look after each other. I can see the passion in their eyes. Trebilco said the couple had been so nice, so friendly. Stuart Cleese. 34, of Bondi, said, 
Harry shared his views on mental health towards everyone. He's a big believer in normalizing the conversation around mental health. He feels fortunate that he's in a position to get the right people together to spread that message. He's a big supporter of small community groups like One Wave. Prince Harry talked to the group about his own issues with mental health. He said he's seen a couple of counselors before and never found one that suits him. Klee said, he's a big believer in having normal conversations with normal people. He was pretty genuine, real honest, real open, real relaxed. He wasn't trying to put on a show. He was really genuine in the way he came across. As she left, Meghan told the group that she was loving her first experience of Australia. It is so great to be here, she said.